Welcome back to Spirits with Steven. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a Suburban, a classic Prohibition style cocktail, right after this. Welcome, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to make a Suburban. Uh, this is, uh, unlike some of the other ones we've done, this is a Prohibition style cocktail, which means there are not a lot of mixers. In Prohibition style cocktails, it is booze on top of booze on top of booze, usually with a little bit of bitters or vermouth of some kind. Uh, but so today we're making a Suburban. Uh, suburban dates back to the 1930s, I believe. Uh, there was a gentleman who uh, became rich. He was a prospector outside of Las, uh, yeah, Las Vegas. Moved to uh, New York City. Um, started uh, up and coming with the stock exchange and all that fun stuff. Uh, made a ton of money, but he became a uh, big horse racing fan. Bought a horse farm um, and uh, raised a bunch of horses uh, that would race, you know, under his name. And um, his horses kind of became famous in the suburban horse racing circuit. So this was his drink. And uh, so it's it's kind of credited to him in that in uh, in that way. Uh, traditionally, it's made with um, bourbon um, or scotch, but today we're going to be making it with Irish whiskey. Uh, so this is going to be an up cocktail. Uh, it's going to go in a martini glass. Uh, whenever you're doing a martini cocktail, while you're building the cocktail, you always want to make sure the glass is chilling. So that's the first thing we're going to do. There's there's not much to that. All you need to do is. Set ice in that glass, and you can set that glass aside. Uh, and then um, the Prohibition style cocktails, because they are um, booze on top of booze on top of booze, you don't really need to shake them. There's no syrups, there's no citrus that you need to brighten or awaken. Uh, so you're going to actually stir this cocktail. Uh, stirring the cocktail gives it a much smoother mouthfeel, doesn't put any aeration into the glass, uh, into the drink itself, and so it's going to be a much like thicker, more kind of viscous um, uh, cocktail. So uh, we're going to start off with an ounce and a half of Kilbegan. Kilbegan is Irish whiskey. Um, it is the oldest, um, the oldest distillery in Ireland. Uh, not the oldest continuous distillery. Uh, they have gone um, dark a couple times, uh, but currently they've been distilling, I believe, for the last uh, 80 years, uh, and they've been around since 1757. So you're going to start with an ounce and a half of Kilbegan Irish whiskey. That goes right into the glass there. Uh, then we're going to be using uh, Dos Matteris uh, PX. Um, a suburban calls for dark rum, traditionally something like Myers or something like that. Uh, I like Dos Matteris. It's, uh, it's aged five years in uh, virgin oak cask, and then it's aged five years in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Pedro Jimenez is this dark, like really rich uh, sherry. It's going to impart these kind of like nutty, sweet flavors to it that you're not going to get in a lot of dark rums. Uh, so you're going to do a half ounce of that. Uh, that goes right into the glass as well. And then the last thing we're using is a tawny port. Um, we're using Neoport. Um, they make some absolutely delicious ports. Uh, but so you're going to do a half ounce of that. Um, that goes right into the glass as well. Uh, and then this cocktail calls for two different kinds of bitters. Um, today we're going to be using Angostura bitters. Angostura bitters have been around forever. Um, they are kind of the tried and true um, bitter of choice. Two dashes of Angostura bitters. Uh, and then we're actually going to be using our house-made orange bitters as well. Um, they're a little bit lighter than some traditional orange bitters, but they're absolutely delicious. So uh, two dashes worth of that. Uh, and then everything's already built into the glass, so you're going to ice the glass down now. You want to make sure there's a good amount of ice. Good, um, good amount of ice means that the, uh, the cocktail will chill without getting too diluted. And then you just want to stir it. When you're stirring it, you want to hold the glass, and you'll feel the glass. As the glass starts to get uh, colder and colder, that's when you know that the cocktail will be ready. So you're going to stir the cocktail um, until you kind of feel that glass starting to change in temperature. It gets cooler and cooler. When you can feel it cool to the touch on the outside of the glass, you'll know that the cocktail itself is ready. You can take that spoon out, set that aside. And then this is something we haven't used before yet too. This is called a julep strainer. A julep strainer is what you'll use with stirred cocktails. 
Uh, there's no particulates, there's no um, seeds, there's no anything that you need to filter out of a stirred cocktail most of the time. And so you use a julep strainer because it's going to pull um, just the liquor out. We'll double strain it as well to make sure there's no ice chunks. Uh, but a julep strainer is all you need when you're doing a mixing tin or a mixing glass. It sits right in the glass. You can get rid of this ice now. And then you'll hold the julep strainer down into the glass and you'll pour everything out. There's not much ice left in this, so double straining isn't really an issue. When you uh, do these, if you have uh, ice that, that chips easily, if you're using real small ice or crushed ice for some reason, you'll want to double strain it. Uh, and then this one here um, is going to get an orange twist on the, uh, on the top for some aromatics. Just a long orange peel. Um, as always, you want to express the oils on top of the drink. Rub that orange right around the outside. It'll force the aromatics there. And then you're going to just twist that orange peel and drop it in. And there's your Suburban. Enjoy. Thanks for joining us for Spirits with Steven. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter, and we hope to see you at the bridge soon.